I'm JD, and this week on NASA Now, we'll find out why scientists are interested in microbial mats on Earth and how that relates to our search for life elsewhere in the universe. But before we get to that, let's find out what else is happening at NASA Now. <laughs> Technicians at NASA's Kennedy Space Center are working to repair small cracks on the tops of two metal support beams on the Space Shuttle Discovery's external tank. The cracks developed as the external tank was being filled for the shuttle's November 5th launch attempt. That launch attempt was scrubbed because of a hydrogen gas leak, which other technicians are working to repair. Astrobiologists are carefully monitoring a nano satellite currently in polar orbit. The shoebox-sized satellite contains two experiments designed to help scientists better understand how Earth-born microbes grow, reproduce, and adapt to the stresses of the space environment. NASA will monitor the orbiting microbes for the next six months. Last week, researchers made a major announcement at NASA that caught the attention of the world. After conducting tests in the harsh environment of Mono Lake in California, scientists have discovered the first known microorganism on Earth to be able to thrive and reproduce using the toxic chemical arsenic. The newly discovered microbe strain GFAJ-1 substitutes arsenic for phosphorus in its cell components. Phosphorus is part of the chemical backbone of DNA and RNA and is considered an essential element for all living cells. Arsenic, which is chemically similar to phosphorus, is poisonous for most life on Earth. This finding of an alternative biochemistry makeup will alter biology textbooks and expand the scope of the search for life beyond Earth. Now let's take a look back at the past. November 1969, Apollo 12 astronauts land on the moon near Surveyor 3, a robot probe that landed two and a half years earlier. Astronauts remove pieces of the probe to be taken back to Earth for analysis. Scientists are surprised to find living bacteria on one of the instruments. It is later discovered that the probe had been accidentally contaminated with a common strain of strep bacteria prior to launch and that the bacteria survived dormant in this harsh lunar environment. What may look like green slime is what scientists call a microbial map. And believe it or not, NASA's really interested in that. Here to explain is Dr. Brad Bebout, a research scientist at the NASA Ames Research Center. Here in the Microbial Ecology Biogeochemistry Research Lab, we're studying all kinds of things about how microbes impact our planet and how we might use what we know about microbes impacting our planet in our search for life elsewhere. Most of the history of life on Earth is exclusively microbial. Microbes are the earliest forms of life that we know about. Microbial mats are the earliest ecosystems that we know about. Okay, so microbial mats are a name that we give to a collection of microorganisms that's gotten kind of thick, so thick enough in order to be able to call it a mat. There are microorganisms that are pretty much everywhere. There are more microorganisms in your body than there are cells of you in your body. They recycle the air that we breathe, they recycle all the nutrients that we need for life, and so the future of life on Earth is intimately tied up with the future of microbial life on Earth. There are three fundamental questions that astrobiology seeks to answer. How did life begin and evolve? Is there life elsewhere? And what's the future of life on Earth and beyond? Most of NASA's efforts at life detection right now are looking for microbial life. So we're not looking for little green men, we're looking for little green microbes or microbes of some kind. And there is evidence of microbial mass in the fossil record and the evidence um, looks like this. And if you look at 
a living microbial mat such as this, you can see that there is very similar um, features. And so by studying the mats that are living today, we can understand how those fossils were formed, what kinds of processes gave rise to forming those fossils, and then we can use that information to interpret what their early environment might have been like. So we can actually find out about the conditions for life on early Earth by studying the evidence of microbial mats over geologic time. Using microbial mats as an example of what to look for on other planets means looking into the microbial mats at what we call biomarkers. So there are morphological, so shape biomarkers, there are chemical biomarkers, so evidence of their processes that they're, that they're performing as a function of their being alive are preserved in the chemicals that they make, the gases that they uh, let escape into the environment. Microbial mats can still be found in salt marshes, lakes, riverbeds, but you can also find them near where you live. So take a look in your houses, in your school grounds, in places like bird baths, rain gutters, and see if you see any evidence for these colorful communities that we call microbial mats. If you do, send us a picture and we'll tell you if we think that you have a microbial mat. Did you know NASA has supported research on microbial mats for over 20 years? This research not only helps scientists better understand our own origins here on Earth, it will help them to recognize life elsewhere in the universe. Today we learned about microbial mats and why astrobiologists find them so fascinating. Now it's your turn to help NASA with this important research. Check out this week's resources and activities on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. This week, you and your classmates are on a slime hunt. Your challenge is to find a microbial mat in your neighborhood and to take a digital photo of it. Then email your photos and observations to the address on the screen with slime hunt in the subject line. Your mat could be chosen by NASA scientists who will then ask you to collect a sample to send to our labs for further study. For more information, go to the NASA Explorer School's website. Now it's time to check out what's up. One of the most impressive events in the nighttime sky this month will be a total lunar eclipse. On the West Coast, the eclipse begins at 10.32 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on December 20th. And on the East Coast, it will be 1.32 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on December 21st. The next total lunar eclipse will happen on June 15th, 2011. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Join us next time when we'll take a closer look at the epoxy mission and its successful flyby of Comet Hartley 2. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.